okay this is session 4 again on steam boilers in the previous session up to the session 3 so we have discussed on the steam boilers so for what purpose we are using the steam boilers and the functions of steam boilers we have seen in the previous sessions in the session 3 uh, i have told you about the water tube boiler so the water tube boiler means so the water is flowing inside the tube and around the tube the flue gases are flowing so this is the water tube boiler and example for water tube boiler we have studied the Babcox and Wilcox boiler so that is one of the example for water tube boiler and later on we have seen the differences between water tube boiler and fire tube boiler and in today's session so again we are back with the steam boilers in the Today's session, we will see once again the one more example for the fire to boiler. So the example for uh, fire to boiler is a Lancashire boiler. So now we will see the working of Lancashire boiler, how the Lancashire boiler works now. So first of all, uh, in this figure I have shown three views. One is of uh, the <coughs> front view, the side view and the top view. So the uh, Three views I have shown because the, the different parts of the boilers are seen in different views. So to show all the parts of the boilers, I have shown the boiler in a three different views here. So again, as I told you in the previous sessions, so the boilers are fitted with the mountings and accessories. The mountings are used for the <coughs> safety purposes and the accessories are used to increase the efficiency of the boilers so the same way so this Lancashire boiler is also fitted with uh, some the mountings so for the safe operation of the boiler so those are the safety wall steam stop wall so these are all the <coughs> safety devices or i can say the uh, safe working of the boilers these are all take care of safe working of the boiler so here uh, this boiler is mounted on the the brick works the brick wall right so in the side view i have shown here there, this is this is a boiler drum and the boiler drum is placed on the brick works or i can say the brick wall here right so these two i have shown here is the fire tubes so the fire tubes and these two are the side channel one and side channel two the side channels and this is one we called as the bottom a uh, sentinel channel right so these are all the and then again there is the ash pit here again there is a furnace door is there so the again this is the furnace grate on the top of the furnace grate again you are feeding the uh, fuel that is a coal and the coal is uh, fired here again there are a few gases are generated these flue gases are flowing in the pipes those are called as fire tubes so in the side view there are two fire tubes are there so on this fire tubes the uh, flue gases are flowing and these two are escaping uh, through the uh, central uh, bottom central channel so these flue gases are again coming from the bottom central channel from this bottom central channel this enters the side channels side channel one and two so the 90 percent of the heat is a transfer of heat takes place in the bottom central channel and eight to ten percent are taking place in the side channel right so this working we will see it with a, a one um, a one uh, a video so that's that will explain you further so <clears throat> let us see with the brief description of the Lancashire boiler here right so th this is the uh, figure I am showing here this is the Lancashire boiler so this is the brickwork so on the brickwork the boiler is fitted so you are seeing on the top here these are all the safety um, devices so those are called as the mountings mounted on the the Lancashire boiler so the Lancashire boiler is a low pressure internally fired stationary fire to boiler with natural circulation the circulation of the flue gases takes place naturally here <clears throat> right the boiler type is stationary 
ऑरिजेंटल लो प्रेशर इंटरनली फायर फायर डू बॉयलर एंड नेचुरल सर्कुलेशन सो दिस इज वन ऑफ दंदन प्रेशर रेंज इज ऑफ सिक्सटीन बार स्टीम प्रोडक्शन रेट इज नाइन थाउजेंड के जी पर अवर एफिशियंसी इज फिफ्टी टू सेवेंटी परसेंट राइट सो नाउ द विल सी द कंस्ट्रक्शन एंड वर्किंग ऑफ इट सो द कंस्ट्रक्शन एंड वर्किंग विल जस्ट सी सो द कंस्ट्रक्शन एंड वर्किंग एंड ऑल्सो हियर इट इज शोन द डिफरेंट पार्ट्स ऑफ द बॉयलर हियर सो एज टोल्ड इन द टू डी ड्रॉइंग ऑल्सो द सेम थिंग आई एम शोइंग इट हियर इन द थ्री डी नाउ सेफ्टी वॉल स्टीम स्टॉप वॉल दिस इज द चिमनी and this is the cylindrical shell there is a man hole is provided here then this is the feed check wall then this is the grate then fire box fire door ash pit so blow off wall and water level gauge the pressure gauge these are all the different components of the boiler here then next we'll see how it works now so <clears throat> after seeing the different parts of the boiler here so now we'll see the sections of this boiler as it uh, shown in the 2d drawing the sections uh, uh, will tell you or uh, different uh, parts of the uh, boiler so now in this i am showing the top view so this uh, top view means where uh, there are two uh, uh, tubes are there that is those are called as fire tubes this is the first and this is the second fire tube here so i am showing it in the top view. these are the fire tubes right i am showing here with the color those are the fire tubes and this is the brick work here this is the brick work so the brick work where uh, see now the <coughs> flue gas are flowing so here you are supplying of a coal is supplied here so when you supplying the coal then the burning of the coal takes place uh, in the two grades of the um, where this is the brick arc is provided here so brick arc is uh, to divert the uh, flow upward moment of the flue gases so that <clears throat> burning coal and ash with flue gases so that it can uh, avoid the flowing of the ash in the uh, flue gases so now see how this is flowing this these are the flue gases are flowing and there is some uh, small here look at this so whenever you come here then there is a definitely uh, see this this these two are called as the uh, uh, flue gas uh, tubes is a fire tube so i can say the fire tube see these two are called so uh, when it comes here again there is a, a small opening there is a somewhat a convergent uh, uh, type of section is there here so that this increases the flow of the flue gases once it increases the uh, flue gases so it uh, go with the higher uh, pressure right this is what he has makes some um, convergent type then this is a side view from the side if you uh, see there is only one pipe you have seen but there are definitely two uh, fire tubes are there but uh, in the side you are seeing only one tube so when you see the in the front uh, front view so this is the front view so when you see it uh, through the front view so in the front view you are seeing the two circular fire tubes so uh, this is the uh, front view so in the front view you are seeing this is the uh, two uh, fire tubes so on the in front of each fire tube there's a grate is provided so on the on the top of the grate again the coal is fed again that coal is fired then the flue gases are generated these flue gases are flown inside the tube that's the fire tubes and so this uh, surrounding the fire tubes the water waters are surrounded so they, this is a damper provided to change the direction of flow of the flue gases see now the feed check wall is there when you open the feed check wall the water is flown here the water is filled in the tubes so then then it is gets heated then there is a formation of the uh, steam is taking place here this is a steam the formation of this is a water so because of this uh, flue gases this water gets converted into a, this this one steam convert this water is gets converted into a steam right so again there is a at this top there is a nt priming pipe is provided so as you know already why the nt priming uh, priming pipe is provided because the steam contains the water particles so those water particles gets separated in the nt priming pipe and it only supplies the the steam steam to the uh, engine <laughs> right so this is what the uh, working see now how it is gets steam stop all is the so through the steam top wall 
then you can get the steam out of the boiler and that you can use it for the applications this is a manhole so the one manhole is provided at the top and one more manhole is provided at the bottom so through this manhole you can enter the inside and you can make some repairs and maintenance works in the boiler <coughs> this is the manhole at the top side then the next uh, <coughs> see this is a blow off wall so so from this blow off wall uh, some impurities are the, or uh, the sediments or the scales deposited that you can uh, remove it uh, from the boiler frequently so for that we are using the blow off wall right so then uh, later on we'll see uh, some of the advantages and disadvantages some advantages and disadvantages so now uh, we will uh, see what are the merits means advantages and disadvantages of this boiler now the first one is cleaning and inspection can be done easily so it is more reliable and can generate a large amount of steam so it is required less maintenance so this boiler is a natural circulation boiler so the lower electricity consumption than others the circulation of uh, this uh, flue gases and all so that is uh, done by the uh, natural <coughs> naturally so there is a uh, differences of the atmospheric pressure and inside pressure so you no need to use uh, as uh, other uh, external work or uh, the other uh, pumps or the uh, you can what you can say the compressors for the uh, flow of this uh, flue gases so that uh, uh, transfers this uh, heat naturally it can easily operate it can easily meet with the load requirement so whenever there is a load requirement varies sometimes you need more uh, steam and sometimes you need less steam so whenever the, there is a variation in the load also if the load variation takes place at the uh, customer or a consumer's end so the based on the uh, load requirements uh, definitely this boiler uh, cooperate and uh, it uh, starts the functioning so it can easily meet the load requirement then Langshire boiler has a high thermal efficiency of about 80 to 90 percent so the high thermal efficiency is there uh, in the uh, this boiler and then what are the demerits and uh, or we can see the disadvantages of this boiler so this boiler required more floor space is required so more floor space is required for this boiler and this boiler has a leakage problem so this boiler has so the leakage problem so and it requires more time to generate steam so it requires more time to uh, generate the steam why because uh, you are used two few uh, fire tubes two fire tubes and uh, you have uh, two side channels and one uh, central channel so the first the flue gases flows through the um, uh, two fire tubes then it comes to the central channel from the central channel it diverts to the side channels from the side channels is, it enters the uh, chimney so that is what uh, so what he is saying it's uh, it requires more time to generate the steam so it cannot generate a high pressure steam if required so it cannot generate the high pressure steam then grates are situated at the inlet of the fire tube so which has a small diameter so the great area is a small in this boiler so the where we were placed the grate in this uh, Lancashire boiler so in front of the fire tubes only you are placing the two grates for one grate from each uh, uh, fire tubes so in front of each fire tube you are placing one one grate so because of uh, that the great area is uh, small so that is the one more uh, the disadvantages of uh, this boiler so now we can see the locomotive boiler so what do you mean by the locomotive boiler the name itself says the locomotive boiler so the locomotive boiler means it is a, <coughs> a locomotive boiler you can say uh, it is a engine uh, a locomotive you can say it is an engine is a, a rail transport vehicle that provides the motive power for a train right so the so along with that it pulls some engines some engines so you can say the um, <coughs> Uh, locomotives pulled trains from the front locomotives means so the engine uh, the train engine you can say the train engine itself you can say the locomotive boilers right so that is a uh, one more thing here so the now we'll see the what is the working of this uh, the locomotive boiler now so firstly i will uh, show you uh, the one video on the locomotive boiler how the locomotive boiler works 
then later on i'll explain how this is going to work let us watch this uh, let us watch this video uh, on the locomotive boiler so th this is what the engine uh, this is a railway engine so <clears throat> this railway engine itself is a <clears throat> the locomotive boiler locomotive boiler means uh, along with it is not a fixed uh, uh, boiler so it's move along with the vehicle so that is uh, called as the locomotive boiler <clears throat> locomotive boiler i can say it is the engine of the uh, train only see in this case uh, you are seeing this see where there are uh, two pistons and cylinder arrangements are used these two are uh, run by the see now this is not I'll, I'll tell you see now this is the railway engine so uh, in this i can uh, uh, show you the different parts of the boiler this is the fire hole through which you are uh, igniting the fire this is a fire box wherein the fire takes place then next uh, <coughs> so next this is a smoke box through which the smoke is exit to the uh, atmosphere so this is a blast pipe so from where uh, this is a super heater header so the super heater means uh, the the before entering the super heater element pipe uh, the super heater means uh, before uh, water before entering the actual uh, the chamber it gets heated there now i'll explain how this locomotive boiler works here so this is also a fire tube boiler so now here uh, there is a, a fire tubes are there i am showing here these are all the fire tubes and these are the boiler cell this is the boiler cell so <clears throat> this total is a boiler cell and there is a blow of cock is provided here so the blow of cock i have told you this is uh, to remove the <clears throat> the burnt uh, ash uh, so the uh, the uh, not the burnt ash the whatever the sediments or impurities are present uh, in the water which is uh, settled at the bottom so that you can remove it from the blow of cock and this is the grate so on the top of the grate uh, you are uh, providing the fuel so the fuel means there is a coal coal is burnt here so again this this both the sides you are supplying the air so the air is required to burn this coal so because the oxygen is required here so whenever this burns here so to these pipes it enters uh, the uh, <coughs> this means these are the flue gases enters through the pipes so around this pipe there is a water is uh, there so this uh, flue gases exchange the heat from this fire tubes to the water so this water gets converted into a steam and that is uh, stored in the top portion of the um, boiler right and that you can use it for the further applications right so this is what and uh, next this is a smoke box so after this flue gases it enters the smoke box this smoke from the smoke box it enters the chimney and from the chimney it goes to the atmosphere so then uh, this is called as a heater tubes these are all the heater tubes where <coughs> these heater tubes are provided to heat the water whenever necessary if this uh, uh, flue gases are not sufficient to convert water into a steam so the heater tubes are used to provide the extra heat for conversion of water to the few gases then next there is a dome dome is provided manhole is the there manhole through the manhole again there is a maintenance and a repair work of uh, this boiler takes place and this is a furnace wherein in this furnace uh, there is a burning of the coal takes place so burning of the coal takes place this is called the furnace it is a pressure gauge you can measure the pressure inside the um, boiler how much pressure is there and this is the water tube indicator from this water tube indicator you can check the level of the water whether the sufficient water is present there or not so that you can check it so then if it is below the um, uh, the prescribed level then you can pour some amount of water there so that you can <coughs> uh, run the, uh, uh, the the boiler so the regulator is provided so you can regulate the uh, required amount of uh, the steam here 
so that this you can regulate it how much amount of steam you need to send it there and how much amount of water is required so that you can decide from this so for this we are using the locomotive boiler and this is the working of the locomotive boiler so the working of any boiler remains same only the parts differs here the working is same working is same means again uh, you need to burn the fuel from that uh, burnt fuel you are getting fuel gases those fuel gases you are sending it through the pipes so around that pipe the water will be present so there the heat exchange takes place then the water gets converted into a steam so this is the exchange of heat takes place in the tubes so that is what the boiler does here so from the boiler you are getting the steam and the steam you can uh, send it to the various applications so, so that you can send it to the turbine to run the turbine so or you can send it to the engine to run the engine so this is what about the locomotive boiler and next we will see what are the advantages of this locomotive boiler right first one is it is portable since it is a locomotive boiler so locomotive boiler means it carries uh, some uh, engine uh, so it carries some <coughs> vehicle along with this so it is a portable so since it is a portable you can carry it anywhere so then next this boiler is capable of meeting sudden and fluctuating demands of steam so fluctuating demands of the steam so it is capable of meeting so uh, whenever there is a fluctuating demands of the steam fluctuating demands of the steam means when there is a fluctuation of the loads if, if the, the load, load fluctuates, fluctuates the demands of the steam occurs so, so the dim fluctuation in the demands of the steam also occurs so so this boiler is capable of meeting such fluctuating demands of the steam it is a cost effective boiler so then high steam generation rate the steam generation in this boiler is very high so it is compact in size and its operation is easy it's a compact in size since it is a portable so since it is a moving from one place to another place so the compact in size and operation is easy the next one is what are the disadvantages of it right it faces the problems of corrosion and scale formation it faces the problems of corrosion and scale formation the deposition of uh, some white particles takes place inside the pipe and there is suddenly the corrosion occurs in the pipe so this is the one disadvantage the next unable to work under heavy load conditions because of overheating problems so whenever there is a heavy load so if the load increases so it is unable to work under the heavy loads because so the since it is a portable it is a small in size so it cannot afford for the heavy loads some of its water space is difficult to clean some of its water space is difficult to clean so some of the water space so where the water is stored so it's very difficult to clean so each and every corner of the water space so that's one more disadvantage of it the overall efficiency is less the efficiency of this boiler is less so thank you so this is the end of this session